Hello and welcome to Ageless Rock. This is a megalithic channel for megalithic fans. Today, we are going to check out three more bedrock cave temples along the famous stretch of Elora Caves. The last group of caves at Elora Cave site are Jain temples. The distance between Cave 1 and Cave 34 varies depending on which article you are reading. But a simple pin on Google map tells me, if I were to walk from Cave 1 to Cave 34, it would be a 1.6 kilometers or 1 mile of mind-boggling journey into the minds of ancient Buddhists, Hindus and Jains. Elora Cave site numbering from 30 to 34 are 6 Jain temples, furthest to the north of the entire stretch of caves. There are six caves because there is a Cave 30A before reaching Cave 30. Jainism was once a major religion in ancient India, but today there are only approximately 6 million Jains around the world. Surprisingly, the origin of Jainism is unclear and remains a mystery. The largest Jain temple in the world is located in Rajasthan state, in India. Believe it or not, Jainism is a belief system that doesn't believe in God. They believe in the existence of soul. Every soul can achieve infinite bliss and knowledge and therefore is godliness. Just like Hinduism, Jainism is very focused on non-violence which is called Ahimsa. The world famous Hindu Mahatma Gandhi used Ahimsa principle to defeat the British. Jainism is the only religion proven in history to be the most peaceful religion in the world. The depiction of Ahimsa in Jainism is a lion and a cow drinking together. A spiritual leader in Jainism is called Tirtankara. Bahubali is the first Tirtankara. He has broad shoulders and meditated for one year in standing position and creepers grew on his feet and hands. Jains denounce worldly things and that is why they are naked in the temple. Cave 30A is barely visible from the outside because it is slightly elevated and blocked by the front view. Because it is a monolithic top-down bedrock temple, you have to be in front to see it. There is a small path about 180 meters or 590 feet long that leads to Cave 30. When you get to the front, I will not be surprised to see your disappointed face. The facade barely looks like an exciting monolithic temple. It feels like the work had just begun but everyone decided to abandon it in a hurry. With so much bedrock already removed, it is hard to understand why anyone would live without a trace. Let's start with the first Jain cave of Elora, which is Cave 30. Chota means small and hence the name Chota Kailasa. But this mini Kailasa is not a small project. It is about 25 meters wide and 48 meters deep. It is a much smaller version of the world-famous Kailasa Temple at Cave 16 which is 85 meters deep. If you just have a quick glance at photos of Mini Kailasa, you will think that it is Kailasa Temple at Cave 16. You can see from the photos how identical they are. Chota Kailasa Temple is a Jain temple and it's almost like a prototype of Kailasa temple, which is a Hindu temple. It is believed that Kailasa temple was constructed in the 8th century, while Chota Kailasa temple was constructed in the 9th century. So the concept of prototype will not work for mainstream archaeology. The Indians in this area were Hindus, Buddhists and Jains of large number. I wonder why there is no Buddhist monolithic temple of the same design. There are 16 nicely carved main pillars in the Mandapa. The pillars are arranged in a group of four. There are many Jain carvings to see here. 
Jains have no god and Jain means conqueror. They conquer pride, anger, greed, attachment and desire. Chota Kailasa has a front porch supported by two enormous pillars. I can only imagine the Herculean task of removing bedrock from the inside and slowly hollowed out into a 16-pillar mandapa. It is an amazing ancient wonder, which I am suspicious because all they had was soft chisels. But carving and slicing bedrock was easy and ancient Indians hollowed out the south side into another sacred sanctum. You can see a seated Jina in cross leg position in the south sanctum and a Mahavira in the main sanctum. This is an amazing human achievement if it can ever be done with ancient soft chisels. The cave is not just a top-down rock-cut cave but also slides into the bedrock from the side with lots of Jain carvings on the wall. You can tell from the lines that these walls were created with a tool like working with trowel on cement. It gives you a sense of work done with clay. So let's take a look at the blue box in this photo. The finished part blends nicely into the unfinished part. If this is done by chisels, then the unfinished part will show chisel marks. Look at the ground. It is definitely not finished. But where is the chisel marks? This megalithic monolithic temple is probably the greatest ancient Jain achievement in Indian history based on modern archaeology. But I have my doubt that this is the case because the section in the yellow box is unfinished section. It doesn't look like how unfinished section would look like if it was hewn out by ancient chisels. If religious Indians were interested in top-down bedrock carvings with Kailasa temple design, I am very sure the Indian Buddhists would have made one somewhere between cave 1 and cave 12 which is the Buddhist section. I wonder why Indian Buddhists of the same period at the same time were not interested in the Kailasa temple style. A monolithic temple with a stupa on top and a Buddha in the sanctum would be nice. Let's move on to this cave temple 30A which is rather hidden and has a natural looking path leading towards the temple. You can see the inside marked with X from the outside and you can see the outside marked Y from the mandapa. Inside this cave temple, you can find well-carved huge pillars. The main shrine is a Chaumuka with four Tirtankara on each side. On the ceiling, there is a lotus medallion. This is a very interesting carving. It has two holes that seem connected. I loosely call them torture holes in earlier video on cave 1, but for now, no one knows what it is. Most people will measure this temple based on the usable space as a temple, but I think to appreciate the project, we should see it from an aerial view. The dimension to create this temple is about 13 meters wide and 43 meters deep. This is not a small project with the monolithic temple deep at the far end. Although the measurements mentioned for this cave is about half the size, I think we have to look from the aerial view to appreciate the immensity of this project. About 600 square meters or 6,500 square feet of bedrock had to be removed to get to this point. But this cave site is very puzzling to me. The ground looks more like something mainstream archaeologists would have called it a quarry if the temple was made of megalithic blocks. But this is a monolith. No stone blocks needed here. The beautiful facade is just the porch sticking out. The cave temple was carved into the bedrock. No one can make sense of this so-called unfinished temple. 
There is no construction circumstances that could result in this state of unfinished site if chisels were the only tool available. You wouldn't know if this is Peru or India. If you think about it, why would ancient Indians make a nice smooth exterior wall while leaving a front court floor practically useless? Shouldn't it be opposite? Who would remove 90% of the bedrock, carve beautiful pillars, but the front court remains like a quarry? This quarry looking entrance is not something tourists will be eager to take pictures and post it on social media. But to me, it is caves like this that proves it was done by a civilization with tools we don't have. If Jain devotees were interrupted by war, they will come back after the war. If Indians were paid by ancient dynasties, it would have been documented somewhere. I can prove to you it was done by a civilization not recorded in our known history with these gear tracks marked on the ground. These are the gear tracks marked you can find at Aswan in Egypt. You can see my presentation on gear tracks in another video under comparison playlist. The tool is not ancient chisel. It is something broad like an axe. You can see from the one at Felsenmeer in Germany. By comparing to the size of the man's feet in the photo, this tool is at least about 6 inches wide. Once the gigantic boulder cracked, a machine went over horizontally as if the boulder was soft like clay. Let's move on to Cave 31, which is just one minute walk towards the south. From the roadside, this is what you see. It is an unfinished cave temple. The walls are crude and rough. There are many carvings of Tirtankara in sitting position. But nothing here is impressive for tourists who want to get their minds blown away. A tired tourist will most likely give it a pass. Well, that's all for now. Don't forget to check out Cave 30, 30A and 31 in beautiful India on your vacation and have a wonderful day. This is Bernie Ong signing out. Acha, chatehin, goodbye.